Welcome back, guys. Running a little bit late. I'm still trying to learn how to run this program. So I could not, I have not figured out how to how to share my stream during the Zoom live stream. And they wanted me to use the the key to put into the streaming software. Yeah, I haven't figured all that out yet. So I'm back, but I don't have the share window figured out or I can share what I wanted to share with you guys and let you guys see the inside of my, uh, of my, uh, my new online course. So I'm just going to go over a few things and then later on tonight, I'm gonna to see if I can figure out how to use that share window where I can share with you guys more, you know, I can share with you guys uh, what I wanna share with so I don't have to type and write everything. So hang on a minute and let me get this opened up. So I don't have access to the share window yet. So I can't show you guys my online course curriculum, but what I want to do is uh, take a few minutes and talk about the jurisdiction issues anyway. And I'm just gonna copy and paste the defects in the chat window so people can see them. So pretty much any ruling made by a court, uh, which there was a lack of subject matter jurisdiction is called a void judgment. The really big deal, the real issue in void judgment is subject matter jurisdiction cannot be construed. It can never be presumed. It's never waived and cannot be construed by uh, consent of mutual parties. Subject matter jurisdiction is two parts. First, the statutory common law authority of the court to hear the case and the appearance and testimony of a competent fact witness. In other words, sufficient pleadings. So there's never a witness, especially in a, in a well, in either one. In a judicial foreclosure, there's never a witness. And the court jurisdiction without a witness, because the witness is needed to give the court jurisdiction. You have to be able to have some proof that somebody was injured. Now there are certain there are uh, jurisdiction defects that exist in I don't want to say almost every case, but almost every case. And some of the jurisdiction defect, defects include any of the following. One, no petition in the record of the case. 
and Brown versus Van Curren. And I'm going to leave the case law in there too, so you guys can copy and use it if you're fighting your own case. And I actually have a case that I'm working on now where there was no petition, where there was a defective petition. And the petition was defective because there was no witness. And the attorney is the only one that signed the petition. Now, here's one that is an important one to remember. Fraud committed in the procurement of jurisdiction. The fraud. And the fraud is the fact that the attorney is collecting as a third party debt collector and has no consideration in the deal. And you didn't sign any contract with the third party debt collector. Fraud on the court, pretty much same thing. Now, this one, this next one, number five, is one that most people have to deal with. Especially if you're filing my documents. <laughs> The judge does not have statutory, the judge does not follow the statutory procedures. That's a serious one. That's one that's involved in most situations. In most cases, the judge don't follow the statutory procedures, especially when you back the attorney up against the wall. Now, the ones that are highlighted in yellow, are the ones that are, are more common and are involved in our uh, is what you would be looking for in most cases. And some of these you will find there are uh, several jurisdictional defects in one case. Unlawful activity of the judge. Uh, code of Judicial Conduct. Well, that pretty much covers that certainly would be in yellow. This one violation of due process. Yep, that's definitely one too. I can't add any more in there, so I'm still learning how to use this. So I'm having a little trouble with my live chat window. 
not sure what's going on with it. I got a little more work to do on learning how to do this live stream situation over here. Can you guys see me out there? Send me a message. Let me know if you can if you can see my 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 uh, my live chat. Maybe I've got something messed up. Okay, great. Someone can see me. Okay, cool. Your dead grandpa wants up. Thanks, grandpa. I'm glad you're feeling good enough to watch me today if you're supposed to be dead. Hey, Ken, I see you. I got my eyes on you. I'm watching you. So I haven't figured out how to do my screen share yet. I'm barely figuring out how to get on here through Zoom. So I got a little more work to do before I can show you guys what my uh, curriculum looks like in my online course. And it looks like I'm restricted to what I can. Oh, okay, there we go. I can post more stuff now. I don't know what's going on with that. This is weird. So due process violation, I'm gonna stick that in there. put it I'm only allow 200 characters I have 209 that's the problem okay okay I figured out what the problem is now I'm only allowed 200 characters in my post so on this one the violation of due process I left off a couple of numbers off at the end but what I'll do is I will post all of this jurisdictional stuff um, down below in the in the comment section so that you guys will be able to see it. This is a good one. The court exceeds his statutory authority. Rosen, ten and all versus Rosen, ten and all. That must have been a family fighting each other or something. I don't know. They both had the same last name. And the court exceeds your statutory jurisdiction every time they have you in it because it's an administrative court that does not is not connected to the Constitution, and that's why you have no rights in the court. And the administrative court does not have jurisdiction to make a judicial decision. But we don't understand all of these things and they take advantage of the fact that we're ignorant. But we're learning. Now, this next one. is perfect. There is no justifiable issue is presented to the court through proper pleadings. Now, that kind of goes back to what we talked about at the beginning. If there's no witness, then all of their stuff is 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 trash. There's no justifiable issue presented to the court because there's no witness, there's no injured party, there's no contract, there is no accounting, uh, the money trail, none of that stuff. All of it is missing. And this one, I love this one.
where the complaint states no cognizable cause of action against the party. Yeah, they say the contract is violated, but they don't even put the contract in the court. And we're claiming there, there's stuff missing out of the contract that they filed in court. And this is a great way to force the court to have to make to make them have to show the contract. Um, a much more creative way than show me the note because they just ignore all that stuff. And when a judge is involved in a bribery, and that's pretty much what's taking place because these judges are are given something they're 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 either, either giving funds put in their uh, retirement account or they're giving houses or i don't know they're giving something to throw people under the bus like they're doing and number 16 is really interesting as well. When the rules of the circuit court are not complied with. Now, in the prior stream that we did, we talked a little bit about, about how we jam up the attorney as an M1 defendant and force the attorney to stand by him or herself and the judge, the judge allows the attorney to represent himself and the law firm because they have no other choice. Here you go, violation of jurisdiction. Now, all of these are grounds to have your case dismissed. And if it was me, I would use them one at a time. I would file a motion to dismiss using that very first one and just go down the list. I'd give them, you know, a week or two, whatever, how many days it takes. And then when their time is up to respond or if they, right before they respond, I file another one. There, another motion to dismiss based off of, you know, just make them, make them work. Some people put all this stuff in one, in one uh, document and I, I wouldn't do that. I would make them work. I had a guy ask me, hey, you know, maybe we could do a class action. I'm like, dude, you have no idea. In my opinion, a class action is just for the attorneys. Attorneys do class action so they could get all those people together and get their retainer fee and all that from all those people. And when they get done, the only person that's making any money out of the deal is the attorney. And 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 also the corporation, because if the attorney didn't trick everybody into doing a class action, the corporation would have a lawsuit for each person and have to individually go to court for each person. And that's what you want to do. I mean, the goal here is, is to cost them money. That's the only way to get the, to get to earn their respect is to cost them time and money. Now, uh, my online course that I put together, I'm going to try and figure out tonight uh, how to use the screen share and get more familiar with this live stream situation so I can show you guys uh, the curriculum in the course so you can see exactly what it's about. I added, uh, I added a new lecture in the course and a new uh, lawsuit package what I did was I decided to <clears throat> I decided to add the lawsuit package for legal malpractice uh, in the course, and this will give you opportunity if you had an attorney that threw you 
this will give you an opportunity to go after that attorney for throwing you under the bus. But you got to you got to keep in mind uh, the fact, and a lot of people a lot of people miss forget this or never think about this. The current legal system is structured by the same attorneys that are trying to steal your stuff. So you, with that said, you need to remember that when you're going down the road, you need to make sure you're not, you need to make sure that you're not uh, following the path that they laid out. So the attorney set up the, the current legal system and they made it almost they made it almost impossible to prove damages without someone dying. So what I did was we put together our legal malpractice lawsuit document. Uh, it's actually for legal malpractice and breach of contract. And we're going after the attorney for attorney fees. You want to try and get your attorney fees back because most people that hire an attorney can prove at the end of the day that the attorney breached the contract that you that you agreed to because they threw you under the bus and didn't do anything to protect you. And if you're going after them for breach of contract and uh, your damages are your attorney fees, then that's a little bit different program than going after them for damages because of their wonderful advice that they provided you. So I added that in free so people will be able to uh, to use that, and who knows? Maybe you can uh, get your attorney fees back to pay for the twelve hundred dollars for the online course that you're taking. That's kind of the idea. And I've also added in there, like I told you guys in the last uh, in the last get together, at the end of the day. You're, it's not going to be about whether or not you paid or who was the service or any of that. At the end of the day, it's going to be about challenging the judge to block him from illegally dismissing your case. That's what it's going to be about. So I've added in the online course uh, the two packages that you need to get in the judge's face if the judge violates you. Uh, one of the packages, it's called the uh, reconsideration package. Most people don't realize that the manager judge is the judge that generally dismisses people's lawsuits. And the manager judge does that without even, the district judge never even looks at it, at your, at your documents, at your, at your claim. And what happens in most cases is people, is the, 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 either the clerk or the district judge will hand your case down to the master judge. And then usually the master judge looks at it and decides it needs to be dismiss, dismissed for failure to state a claim or something stupid like that. The problem is the master judge does not have jurisdiction to be involved in your case without consent of all parties and their attorneys if they have attorneys. So the manager does not have consent to be involved in your case now that's a violation of two or three of the things over here. And I have a package to address the manager judge being illegal involved in your case. Now the motion for reconsideration or the package for reconsideration has several documents in it. If the judge illegally dismisses your case, what you wanna do is in that motion for reconsideration, you have a motion for reconsideration you outline all of your arguments and you add file stamp copies of the documents that you have filed in court that they ignored to your motion for reconsideration and you file it within 10 days of the judge's order or decision or whatever. You also have in that reconsideration package, um, you also have in that package a motion to recuse the judge. And in that package, and remember, People think it's difficult to recuse a judge. And all that. At the end of the day, you need to understand, you don't have to prove that the judge was impartial. All you have to do is show the appearance of impartiality. And that is all you need to have to recuse the judge. 
And I also have a notice of claim. Now the notice of claim is the claim against the judge, but it's written up as a notice of claim because they require that you give them notice before you jam them up. Now you don't have to if you've been injured, but in this case, it's a good idea to strategically to give them an opportunity to let you pass or to do the right thing. And I would file those three things and then I would file the notice of appeal. Now, keep in mind, you have to get all this stuff done within 10 days of the judge denying you access to the court. And then once you get those things done, you file your notice of appeal before they have a chance to answer. And when you do that, it jams up the judge because now the judge has to make a decision. Do I want the higher court to see all the BS that I'm doing over here and that I'm getting sued and getting recused? Or do I want to let this person go ahead and pass and get in court and try to throw them out later? That's kind of how that works. And if the judge doesn't do the right thing, or if you have to, you need to be willing to turn that notice of claim into a claim. At the end of the day, the way I see it, it don't matter who you're suing. If you're suing the attorney, if you're suing the clerk, if you're suing the judge, it don't matter, okay? You need to be suing somebody for what they're doing to you because they're all working together to get this done. And until you step up and smack somebody in the face, they're not gonna respect you because they're used to stomping on people and doing whatever they want. And I tell you right now, when you roll in my program, they're gonna be taking a second look. I had a lady go to court and judicial foreclosure one day and she told me she was really nervous. So I told her, look, all you gotta do is object. As soon as the attorney starts talking, stand up and object. And of course, she's like, well, what do I say when they start when they stop laughing? <laughs> yeah. And I told her, look, when they stop laughing, you tell them I'm objecting because there's no witness to give the court jurisdiction to proceed. And that's what she told them. And she said, the judge looked over at the attorney and asked the attorney if the attorney had a witness. Of course, the attorney looked at the judge like, what, what the hell? You know, I don't have no damn witness. And then the, the attorney said, no. And the judge said, well, this matter is gonna be continued when you can come to court with a witness. Slam the hammer. And the lady never called me back for any more advice. So I'm assuming that the judge, that the attorney couldn't find a witness. Now, people always ask me all the time, how many have you won? And how many have, you know, people have no idea that so we're not in the conventional program. We're in the non-conventional program. And in the non-conventional program, I'll tell you right now, when attorneys get their butt backed up against a wall and they have to settle, they're going to make sure you sign that non-disclosure statement so you don't me anything or anybody else anything. So if you have to go to court on a judicial foreclosure, that's the first thing you should tell them when you get up in there is there's no witness. And without a witness, the court don't have jurisdiction. And if the judge proceeds without jurisdiction, then the judge can be held li uh, liable in, in, in federal court in your lawsuit. So you have to be willing to do whatever it takes. Now, my new online course is set up. Once you review the first several chapters and you learn the things that you need to look out for, you can go ahead and fill out your wrongful foreclosure lawsuit and get it filed before you complete the course. But you do have to take the lectures in order and you can't skip through and you have to watch the videos in order. You can't skip through them either. But once you get through the first part of the lectures, and you get to the part that actually shows the, the lawsuit package, then you can go ahead and get your lawsuit filled out and get it filed to protect yourself while you're completing the rest of the course. Do, do you guys have any questions about the course? I'm still gonna do another feed, a live feed on the course 
once I figure out how to open up the cloud, open uh, open up the the share window, or I can show you guys uh, the curriculum. But if anybody has any questions, of course, I'd be happy to answer them right now. Or if you have questions about the lawsuit packages, the lawsuit packages have been reduced on uh, my coronavirus sale to 500 bucks and the loss and the, uh, the online course is $1,200 and in the $1,200, you get everything. You will get all of the documents that you need to file your lawsuit. You will get the documents that you need to harass the attorney. I have a really cool uh, sanction motion that we file against the attorneys for $5.5 million as well. And it's like having a mini lawsuit inside of a bigger lawsuit. And it's a problem. And usually what I like to do is save that sanction motion for later. And if the attorneys come up with another attorney to represent them, then I would file that sanction motion against the new attorney. I've only had one time where an attorney was brought in uh, actually from another state to represent uh, a home, to represent the bank, or excuse me, to represent the attorneys that was going after uh, the property. And the homeowner filed that sanction motion against the attorney and that blew that whole, that whole thing up. These uh, attorneys have a hard time finding an attorney that's willing to take the case once they find out that you're suing the foreclosure attorney for um, wrongful foreclosure breach of contract and co illegally collecting as a third party debt collector. And when you throw that on the table, boom. The other attorneys don't want anything to do with it because they're doing the same thing. So I'm going to leave you guys a link to my online course so you can take a look at it. And please subscribe to my YouTube channel my goal is to qualify to host ads on my site. And once I do that, I'll be making a ton of money from those ads, which will allow me to lower the prices of my lawsuit packages. I, I would like to have them around $300. And that way, most anybody should be able to uh, afford the package to defend their property. But I can only do that once I once I qualify to host ads on my site because the money generated from those ads will allow me to do a whole bunch of things like hire help and someone who knows how to, to run this Zoom program <laughs> and help someone to help me put these things together so I don't have to do everything. So I'm looking forward to that. So you guys, please subscribe to my channel and tell people about us. You know, we specialize in foreclosure defense, third party debt collections. I do other stuff too. I just had to narrow it down uh, because I had too many irons in the fire. So we narrowed it down and focused on foreclosure defense because that's my passion because I went through that. I know I, I've been through what you're facing now. And I know how, how I felt when I was not able to protect my family. And I decided that that's, I'm never gonna be in that position again. So I became obsessed with learning all of their the attorney's procedures and, and, and practices and policies and the stuff that they're doing wrong and started to learn how to use this stuff against them. And that's pretty much what we do. So if nobody has any more questions, I'm going to go ahead and end my stream and get back to work and try and figure out how to share my my uh, my my screen so that I can but before I leave I want to give you guys a couple of links Here is a link to my online school, my paralegal school that hosts my, 
my online course. So you guys check it out. Oh, I need you to scroll down. I did get, a, I got a couple of questions. Your dad, grandpa, Juan, sup? Can you post these in the comment section after the video? Yes, I sure can. As a matter of fact, I have a link to another uh, page that even has more of these jurisdictional defects on them and I would post it too. Diesel for We The People News. So is the civil law contract, so is this a civil law contract or in common law? So uh, diesel for We The People News, I'm not sure I understand your question. When you say is this, what what this, what what does this mean? Are you talking? Um, the foreclosure that they're doing against you? Or are you talking about what we're doing against them? And in my opinion, contra uh, common law is the only place that I want to be. As far as what kind of a contract it is. So I, I'm, ass I'm assuming you're talking about the contract that the bank said you signed or the contract the bank is saying or the attorneys are saying um, the bank had with you. So I'm not sure. Oh, I see. So what he's asking is a contract used against us. Is it civil or is it common law? So I, I'm going to go with civil on that answer because they don't do anything in common law. If they did, well, excuse me, if you're smart enough, you can make them have to do the common law by jamming them out with a jurisdiction. Otherwise, it's civil. They don't like to go in anything in common law because under common law, you have constitutional rights. And that's one of the reasons why they don't like to do nothing under common law. You're welcome, your dead grandpa. What's up? Dead grandpa one, you're welcome. I'm glad that I can help. He's thanking me and, 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 and God bless. God bless you guys too. You know, I went through what you went through and I decided to do something about it. I got tired of the attorney. The attorneys, the attorneys treated me like I was stupid and it really pissed me off. And that's pretty much the reason why I'm here right now helping people. I don't like to lose. And anybody work with me, you you know that. I'm very passionate and I don't like to lose and I don't play. And I'm willing to do whatever it takes. And I always mention that to people, if you're not willing to do whatever it takes, rolling with me is probably not the best thing for you because I'll roll over whatever gets in the way one way or another. Their whole program is based off of fraud. And if you got the time and the experience to figure out how to pick it, you can pick at it and find those little threads and keep pulling. And that's what we do. But most people, most people don't realize the number one, the biggest mistake that, that most people make um, in foreclosure fight is they do not have the person that, that actually initiated the foreclosure and is responsible for the foreclosure listed on their lawsuit any place. And that would be the attorney. The attorney is the only name on the lawsuit document and the attorney's name should be the number one name on your lawsuit because their foreclosure lawsuit only had their signature on it. And one of the things that I'm doing now is adding to the lawsuit that you are, uh, that you're going after as damages after the defendant's assets. Yep, I love that. 
if you're going after defendant's assets as well, now you are going to make that attorney face the fact that he could lose his property too. He could lose his house to you. Uh-huh. And now you can let that fool see how it feels to face having your home stolen from you. Except we won't be stealing it. We'll be taking it legally. Yeah, diesel for we the people. I think you you got that about right. When you challenge the restriction of any court, it would be common law and multi-military trib tribunal. I'm guessing, and you are right. I haven't had time to get into the the military tribunal part of it, but you are absolutely right in your comment here. And you guys will find out that once you, once you correct the, the number one mistake, you will find out that things are things will be, things change. The number two mistake, in my opinion, that people make is trusting that attorney is going to help you. And I always tell people, you can screw up your case yourself. You don't need to pay somebody to do that for you. And I, I say that well, a little fun intended, but nonetheless, it's it's a fact. You don't need to have an attorney. In your in your way, and the attorney is not going to help you. And we actually went over this in the in the in the prior live feed that we had a few hours ago. The attorneys will not help you, and the reason they won't help you is because the reason they won't help you is because the attorney is the one suing you, trying to steal your house. And attorneys don't attack each other. That ain't going to happen. So your dead grandpa won. Sup has a question. Do these apply to criminal cases? Yes, sir. They absolutely do. And, and one of the things that we address in our uh, online course is that these statutes that they're using to foreclose on people do not contain uh, the elements to be considered a valid law. And that whole write-up is in, all the information about that is in the online course. And there's no arguing that. There is no arguing. The constitution for each state mandates that in order for something to be a law, it has, has to have an acting clause, it has to have a body, and it has to have a title and the revised codes and statutes don't have any of those things. And no one argues that. Well, we do, I do. I like, I like to start at the gate. If you start at the gate, the arguing gets cut out. Once the arguing starts, the judge gets to help them. And that's the way their program is structured. It's pretty simple. You argue, the judge gets to help them and you're done. So the goal is to create the atmosphere where they don't want to argue because they don't want to be held accountable for anything. They don't want to have anything that can, that can help people smack the bank in the face, actually the attorneys in the face because the bank is involved in it at this point. They don't want their name on that. They don't want you to have to, uh, they don't want to have appeal and have that come out of the appeals court with, the, with, their, with their name on it and be case law for other people to use and stick in their face. 
if that happened, I think the judge would be jammed up and he wouldn't be getting his, 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 his campaign funds or his retirement funds or his free houses or whatever it is they're doing for these fools throwing people under the bus. Uh, diesel for we the people news. Don't worry, I I I know the spell checkers is 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 issue. I have issues with the spell checker and with my spelling. So <laughs> I'm all right with that. Um, I can tell by your other comments where you are. So if you post something and it don't fit, you know, I don't really take I don't think too much of it because I know that the spell checker is kind of a pain. It, it gives me a hard time too. Uh, you know, you know, your life is rough when what you're trying to spell the spell checker can't even tell you what it is. So, <laughs> so John K, uh, your loan through Deutsche Bank Trust is the attorney hired by Deutsche Bank or the servicer. So, John, my opinion is. The attorney ain't hired by anybody. There is no contract. There is no power of attorney. There is no way the attorney can verify agency. What's going on here, in my opinion, and this is, you can follow follow the, the signatures. What's going on, in my opinion, is the attorneys are acting as third-party debt collectors. And I think this is one of the one of the facts that makes my program, I don't know, badass, okay, because I figured this out from the signatures. You look at that judicial foreclosure uh, petition, it's only signed by one person, the attorney. If you look at the, the, the notice of default letter, it's signed by the attorney and not the trustee. So these attorneys are acting as third party debt collectors and stealing people's houses. It's, it's, it's a, it's sad what, they, what they've been getting away with. Thank God for the internet. Because with the internet, now, now the playing field's a little more level. Well, actually a lot more level. So the bank, by the time, so by the time, by the time they get to foreclosing on your property, okay, the bank is not even in the picture anymore. Because the bank does a charge off a corporate charge off, they write off the debt, they claim the debt on the insurance and they write it off their taxes. And then they sell, they destroy whatever documentation they have. And then they sell the alleged debt to the debt collectors, their buddy attorneys for them to get money off of it too. Now, this is the reason why I don't add all of those people that they add on the front page of their lawsuit. We don't add, I don't add all of those people because all that does is pollute the water, okay? The only, you only need to have the three people, the attorney, the law firm, attorney's law firm, and the last servicer that actually provided that alleged debt to the attorney. And you wanna force the attorney to have to protect the servicer. You leave all those other people off. Now the attorney's standing by him or herself, pretty much. And by adding the lawsuit, by adding the law firm to the lawsuit, no one from the law firm can help them. So that's a nice, neat little package that you that you put them in. And then I have documents in the lawsuit package to help you address the fact when the court ignores the rules and allows attorney to go through anyway because the attorney can't. Uh, Diesel for We The People said, I think you're right. Soon as you argue, you lose. Yep. And here's the to keep in mind. They don't want to have a hearing until they've already figured out how they're going to throw you under the bus. So if they have a hearing, and usually what I do, if they schedule, 
if if they schedule a hearing, then we're going to file something the day before the hearing and mess that all up and make them have to go back to the and make them have to go back to the to the drawing board. Sometimes I have people file stuff the morning of the hearing. And your honor, here's my copy. I didn't have time to get this in, in filed in. Um, if you guys would like to continue the hearing to give them fools a chance to uh, respond, <laughs> we can do that. My goal is to teach people how to stay in the ring, get their facts on the record they need for their lawsuit and for their appeal. And provide you with a strategy to block the eviction process. Because if you can't block the eviction process, particularly in a non-judicial foreclosure, if you don't have a strategy to block the eviction process, you're gonna be struggling to stay in your home. And they know if they get you out on the street, you ain't gonna have time to be getting up in their face because you're gonna to be too worried about trying to provide shelter for your family. So it's really important for your, your foreclosure defense strategy to have, a, to have a provision in there to block the eviction process. And that's what our non-judicial lawsuit package does. It has a strategy to block the eviction process and it has a strategy to remove the, the, the eviction process straight over to federal court where your title dispute is filed. And we talked a little bit about this in the in the in the prior in the prior uh, live feed. The eviction process, and people don't realize this, the eviction process is immediate possession. Immediate possession is the only thing that they can talk about in the process. If you have a title dispute on the record, eviction court does not have jurisdiction to hear a title dispute. And that's why we filed the lawsuit in federal court to create the title dispute. And then we use that lawsuit in federal court to control everything because the higher court has control over what's going on in the lower court anyway. So be long bright. How long do I have after the case has been ruled to appeal? Is six months too long? So be long bright, you mean after the appeal has been denied and they kick you out? Actually, it, that doesn't really matter because jurisdiction can be challenged anytime up to 15 years. And that's in the document, in the document that we use in our online course. So it doesn't matter if you're, if, if you lost an appeal, you still can go in and challenge what's going on, especially uh, with the document and the jurisdictional challenge with an affidavit that opens the door. But even if you don't, if you're not in the online course, you can still, uh, each lawsuit package has a document to challenge jurisdiction in it too. So you can challenge, you can challenge jurisdiction at any time up to 15 years. And I know attorneys ain't gonna tell you this, and they ain't gonna help you do this. Yep, diesel for we the people, you're right. If they play sneaky, we play sneaky back. Absolutely. But what we do is within the law. What they're doing is not. So we do stuff to jam the attorneys up and uh, that sanction motion is like great. I had a lady tell me she filed a sanction motion one time and and the judge got pissed at her and so did the attorney and they all started yelling at her. And she told me, she told me later on after after the hearing, she told me that the judge and the attorney were more worried about who what law firm was helping her. Of course I busted out laughing and she said, I, I thought you'd enjoy that. They wanted to know what law firm was helping her. So their heads are really big anyway. I'm like, what law firm is helping? Are you kidding me? Law firms don't do what I do. They don't do half the work that I do. Not even a quarter of the work that I do because they know that their buddies are gonna give them a pass and they ain't gotta do nothing. So no, law firms don't do this kind of work and do what we're doing here. Excuse me. I actually, 
I was thinking about calling judge myself. Okay, no, I'm kidding. <laughs> You're welcome, Bilan. So, Bilan Bright, are you in a judicial or non-judicial foreclosure situation? Miguel Matias, um, you can join. Absolutely. Are you facing foreclosure? And if you are, is it not? Okay, Belive, non judicial. So are you in the appeals process or did you get kicked out of the appeal process already? Belon Bright, where are you and where are you? What's the posture of your situation like the end? And you're welcome for my help. I don't know if you guys can tell from my videos, but I love I love my job. To me, it's nothing more rewarding than than knowing that I help someone get to stay in their house. I think last December I had six families that actually got to spend Christmas in their house that was looking at getting evicted. And all of those six families are still in their house today. And no, I don't post a bunch of stuff showing my wins and all this stuff. This is a personal, it's very personal to go through this thing. And everybody, not everybody wants their name on, on social media or on Google saying that they had to fight and do this fight. And I do have great reviews. But, you know, like I said, I don't push people, you know, and I don't, I have people, I'm like, well, give me a case, give me cases that I can look up, you know, and I'm like, you know, I, I don't even want to want to go there. I'm thinking I'll wait till they're desperate enough to do whatever it takes and come back. Because at the end of the day, I don't see very many other options that are, that are liable to help anybody get anything done. So, so many people sit around and wait to see some wins and wait to see, you know? And I'm like, what the hell are we waiting for? You know, why don't you step up and be the first one? Now, I always tell people, to me, it's important to figure out something that makes sense. You know, I had a guy tell me, the attorney told him, when, when he gets done and loses in foreclosure, they'll do a lawsuit for an antitrust lawsuit. I'm like, an anti what? Are you kidding me right now? And the guy said, yeah, I didn't understand that. But you know, well, you know what? Just because someone's an attorney, okay, don't mean anything. Whatever the attorney decides you need to do, it should make sense to you. If it don't make sense to you, that's BS. So, Bilan Bright, you purchased the package uh, a month ago, and you will file it with uh, in federal court. What's taking you so long, girl? I'm going to blow the whistle and have to make you sit on the bench. Okay, I'm kidding. <laughs> now I'm coach, coach neighbors. So your dead grandpa once up asked me if I would consider converging with the Moors of America with a question mark. They are also in the business of fighting foreclosures. Um, no, uh, your dead grandpa one, I don't, I don't, I don't converge with anybody. And I'll, I'll tell you why. One reason is I do things in a non-conventional manner. And this program I put, I set up myself based off of feedback from, from members in my private Facebook group. So these members have uh, report back to me how these attorneys are trying to get out of stuff and how they're doing things. And it allows me an opportunity to make adjustments, uh, add documents to the lawsuit package, change things. And create the package that we have now. 
Um, most people don't understand the non-conventional or they try and mix the two and it don't work like that because the conventional is stinky and if you mix the non-conventional with the conventional and then it gets both are stinky and it opens up the door for arguments and the non-conventional program and there's no door to the other reason that i don't go in with people is because I don't know what other people have been into, okay? I've had the government try to shut me down uh, two times already. And one time the um, assistant attorney general for the state of Kansas and I spent a year and I don't know, a few months in court back and forth. And that went on until I decided to file a notice of claim against the assistant uh, attorney general, Ms. Lynette Baker and the judge that was acting without jurisdiction and got up and told me he's had 40 jurisdiction for 42 years and he has it today. And I said, well, we'll see about that. So I filed a notice of claim against those two and I added the Kansas Bar Association in there because the Bar Association is the one that's responsible for all this stuff. And anybody that's in the program that, if you're in the program and you fire stuff and it's not going to whatever, then I suggest that you do an amendment and add the bar association, or you might want to add them from the beginning. I know it's up to you, but that's what I did. And once I did that, they just stopped having hearings and sat when it sat down. Now they filed a restraining order against me and that's what they were trying to do. And that restraining order, the time ran out on it a long time ago. And the sad thing was, I wasn't even advertising in the state of Kansas because there are other states with much higher foreclosure rates, but they were trying to get me shut down in those states too, which was totally ridiculous. And at the end of the day, I'm like, well, how could I, you know, they were, the Consumer Protection Agency was harassing me. And I'm like, how could I be injuring someone who's already about to get evicted out of their house? Okay, so I can't make him get evicted any faster but yeah, so I, I didn't go sit down. As you can see, I'm still here and I'm willing to do whatever it takes because they stole my stuff and, and now it's on. So, and I have a list of, uh, well, the last I checked, there was like nine attorneys from different states that filed their reports to the attorney general to come after me for practicing law without a license and that's a problem for them because there is no thing according to according to the supreme court and i'll pull that up for you guys right now in a second and i will show you this is what I use when they get in my face about that. Give me a minute here. I'll copy and paste this in for you. I love this. This is what I stick in their face when people come with me with that crap. Bam. Uh-oh, that one's got too many. Well, I'm going to have to do that one in two parts. I'm going to have to do this one in two parts. I can only put 209 characters or 200 characters in my chat in my chat window. So that one comes in two parts.
So as you can see, according to the United States Supreme Court, no state can license the practice of law. So that whole unauthorized practice of law without license is, is bullshit. I'm sorry. I'm just going to say it. it's bullshit. It's what it is. And that's part of the scam that they stick in our face. So when you go to court to file your stuff, they hold you to a higher standard. They hold you to the standard of a licensed attorney when attorneys don't have no damn license. Good day, Grandpa One. You're welcome. I'm glad that I can answer your questions and help, and I'm glad you appreciate the work that I'm doing for people through the Constitution because attorneys ain't helping nobody. Belong Bright, I was just kidding about sending you to the bench. <laughs> I'm glad you bought your package. You need to. You need to get it in their face because once they lift the moratorium, all of those people that took the time to get their stuff in there are going to be in front of the line. And all of the people that didn't take the time to get their stuff in court are going to be in back of the line. And I think the line is going to be a problem because the attorneys are going to be going after people before you've had a chance to get in court. Now, oh, um, I'm going to also leave a link to my website. So here's a link to my website um, with all my documents. If you, you know, if your budget is not going to allow you to get in the course, then you can go to the website and find what you need. Um, the documents on the website have been doing a really good job too. The documents for the course are super documents that I put together um, to add more value for people that are paying the higher price for the course and the videos and all of the guidance that you get. Uh, in the online course. So the course is, uh, the curriculum in the course is lectures and videos and, and then obviously the lawsuit packages that have all the documents in them that you would need to file throughout your journey uh, during this foreclosure situation that you're facing. So And also, I want to add so Quad Pay is a company, a program that's set up to allow you to make four payments to pay off something that you purchased. I actually signed up for it and I used it uh, twice now, and it works really well. You use your card. And it's set up to make the payments every, I don't know, two weeks or three weeks or something. And the payments automatically come out um, at that time. So you, and you actually get the doc, whatever it is you're purchasing. Uh, the person that's selling it gets paid the full amount. And they send you the, the, the product. And then you pay these guys, you know, for, for payments to, uh, to pay for the document that you that you got. It's a really cool program. And this could help anybody. I mean, if if you're struggling and the five hundred dollar package is gonna be your deal, then you can set this up to make to make four payments. And I don't know what that would be, but it would be, you know, a little under a hundred dollars or something. 125, I, I don't know. It'd be a lot 
uh, a lot easier to do that and go forward to protect yourself than it would be to not do anything. And I'm also going to leave with you guys a link to my Google reviews. And if you have invested in my, in my program and my products and you've reviewed my documents and you feel the way that I feel about them, that they're badass, review. And in the review, specify what you got and what, you know, so people can know you're talking about this document or you're talking about the, um, the non-judicial foreclosure package or whatever. So people looking for those particular packages can see that someone thinks it's pretty badass. And I'm also going to leave a link to our private Facebook page. And this is where we, this is where we communicate together as a team. Um, everybody that's involved, that invested in my, uh, in my, in my program, uses the Facebook page as a way to communicate. It allows me to communicate with everybody, uh, also individually, because I can tag someone's name, or I can actually uh, send them a private message. And if I have to make a, a upgrade or change something in a package, I can post it in a video. Hey, the non-judicial foreclosure package, we added this or we changed this or whatever. And if you need a copy, send me a private message. And that's a lot easier program to navigate than, uh, than having to look up everybody's email address and send it individually out or whatever like that. So that's the, the page. And you'll have to answer the questions uh, to get into the, the page. And I check uh, the Facebook profile, you know, just to make sure that they're who they are and that there's not going to be any problems with me adding them to the group. And in the group, I don't allow people to post, post about general things or random stuff. The group is for posting things about your case, about the lawsuit packages, about things you need, questions. And the group also works together to help each other. And actually, I'm real proud of the group. Um, I had a guy in the group named John Smith who was trying to get some, a new member to, call, to contact him personally outside of the group. And several of the ladies in the group that know that I'm the coach wasn't having it. And they was nice to him and they asked him to, you know, to give them his uh, reviews and feedback information or whatever so they can check him out. And he was, you know, him on a, and then I got went to him. No, 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 we ain't having that. So he got booted out of the group. And then the next day, there was still one John Smith in the group. And the group members thought he was the same John Smith. So they were jumping on him. And this John Smith that was in the group, I had to let the group members know that I can vouch for him because I watched him be born. That John Smith was my son. And my son's a captain, uh, he's a captain in the military, so he uses John Smith. So everybody that he's, that's underneath him don't, can't see, you know, know his business and be up in the middle of his stuff. So I had to explain to them, okay, this John Smith, I know, I watched him be born and he's good. So leave my son alone. <laughs> but I was really proud that the group was looking out for each other like they did, because that's pretty badass. And make sure nobody getting scammed in our group. We ain't having that. I had to reach my arm through the phone and choke somebody out. Okay, never mind. I won't do that. If I did that, I had to go to my website and get some documents to help me with. Well, um, diesel for weedy people, you're welcome for the code that lawyers aren't licensed. And I have a whole page of case law for that. So I'll leave that down below as well. So I only posted a couple of things 
because when I post in this window, I can only post 200 characters at a So, but you see the gist of it, but I'll leave, uh, I'll leave the rest of this stuff. It's like a whole page of stuff showing that the attorneys and yeah. And anytime I post an ad and people on Facebook and I get idiot people jump on and well, you're practicing the law without license, you know, of course, I'm like, well, how do you know I ain't got a license? And because you know there ain't no real license, yeah, I give them a hard time. So I am going to end this so I can get back to work and figure out how to do my, my screen share. I still have a lot of work to do on figuring out how to do this live feed, but at least I got it set up and I'm feeding. I mean, I'm streaming, I'm feed streaming. <laughs> Thank you guys for listening. So I'll probably be back on here on Tuesday and I'm hoping on Monday or Tuesday, I'm hoping I can figure out how to do the screen share so I can show you guys some more stuff. And I'm pretty sure I will be um, on here on Wednesday. Uh, well, on uh, Hamilton Radio. Oh, wait, I'm going to leave a link for that. HamiltonRadio.com. That's the internet radio station that I'm hoping to be doing my show on. And I'll probably be on there on Wednesday, but I'm not sure what time. Maybe 12, maybe 1. I'm not sure. Um, I got to talk to Gene a little bit more and make sure I understand my responsibilities to the radio station and if I agree to do this. And I'm pretty excited about it. So I'm going to check out if there's no more. Ones. And get back to work trying to figure stuff out. So thank you guys for listening and I will see you on the flip side. And if you guys have any questions, send me an email. My email address is here. I'll just go ahead and leave it in here again too. When in courts one at gmail.com. Okay, there you go. And if there's something you guys would like me to cover and it's on the non-judicial side of things, leave me a message uh, in the comment section or send me an email or even a text. You know, you, my number is in there. Here, I'll leave my number again too. 913 -240 -240 -240 -220 -227. Hello, Frankie, I see you. So Frankie, you in Texas? You want to call me after a while, Frankie, and we can talk about your situation a little bit. I didn't have a chance to read all the stuff in the other in the other feed, and I'm still trying to figure out how to get back to it. But um, I, I left my number in there. I hope you got it. You're welcome to call me uh, tonight if you want to. I'm going to be up for a couple more hours. You're in Houston. Yeah, I traveled to Houston to do. I went to Houston. Uh, a couple of a, a couple of months before the coronavirus crap started, 
to um, to to record on the, on the show for uh, Tracy Brown, the Tracy Brown show. I think that that's what I did. It was Tracy Brown show, and we did a recording on her show. But I didn't get a chance to talk about much. Uh, it was just like maybe five or fifteen minute interview, maybe twenty minutes, and there were some other people. Um, from our Facebook page that I've been using my products too that showed up to do the interview. And uh, yeah, it was uh, Jay and Sue Boyer and one other young lady showed up. Frankie five times. So I was just calling you Frankie. I'm sorry, Frankie five times. Frankie, 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 Frankie. Okay, never mind. <laughs> Where am I? I can't tell you. I'm hiding. No, I'm kidding. I'm in Kansas. Lawrence, Kansas, home of the Jayhawks. Yeah, I played football for the University of Kansas in 80 and 81, back when Nebraska was like killing everybody. So when I shut down, Frankie, give me about 10 minutes. I need to go make me a glass of wine or something to sip on now that I'm done trying to figure out stuff that I didn't get figured out. So give me 10 or 15 minutes and then uh, give me a call and we'll figure out what we need to do to get you on the program, okay? The rest of you guys, thank you for watching and listening. And I hope I can get this figured out so I can show you guys some stuff on my screen share and, and step up. Good night, everybody. <laughs>